Hey up everyone. Yeah, right, so it's been fucking eight weeks since I started doing this carnivore diet. Eight weeks and two months. Fuck me. It seemed like two minutes ago I started doing this. Still find myself watching programmes about ketosis and low carb diets and shit like that. It's just a fascinating subject really. I've learned so much about it from this diet and nutrition and plant toxicology is probably one of the things that stands out for me. I'm learning how plants are trying to kill me. Um, yeah, so update. So where are we? What's, what's going on with it? Yeah. Um, well, like the like the the video that I did all about like my health problems and stuff. It still stands. Not every everything's exactly the same as it was back then. Right. So it's totally cured my epilepsy. And had a single epileptic fit for two months. Not one. Not a big one. Not a small one. It's totally fucked off. I haven't had one at all. So that's pretty fucking good. Um, in my ME and my fibromyalgia, like, so I was saying that, like, like, the second day of doing this, I woke up and, like, like, usually the first thing I do when I wake up is, like, I kind of do a, a check of myself. How am I feeling? Have, have I got enough strength? Can I stand up? Can I get out of bed? Will I be able to get downstairs? Whatever, do you know what I mean? I, like, kind of check myself to see how I am, how tired am I, whatever. And, like, on the second day, I did, I did that, and I was like, so much, there's something wrong, but I can't put my finger on what it is. So there's something that's not right here. And then I was like, hang on a minute, I ain't... I ain't got any symptoms. <laughs> and that went on for five days. And then the symptoms came back. But this is the thing, right? It's this this illness that's plagued me for 25 years. Yeah, totally destroyed my life. Fucking turned me into a recluse. Fucking no social life. No friends. Nothing. Do you know what I mean? It's this guy surviving over there. Like, it's taken that and it's like just transformed my life so <clears throat> so like I said like I had no symptoms yet and like now I'm you know I still have good and bad days uh, but it's switched around so like before it was like four or five really bad days where I can't get out of bed or whatever and then I might have a good day and some other days that were sort of medium or whatever yeah like, it's totally the other way around now. I get a lot, a lot more good days. And I'm even getting days when I've got no symptoms. Oh, it's just never happened to me before. It's fucking awesome, man. It's awesome, man. I feel, I feel like, I feel like I've got a life again. And I feel like I've got something I can build on. Um, and I, I just... I'm just proper loving life at the moment, do you know what I mean? Things have happened and stuff, but the, the, this this diet, like, just the way it makes me feel, do you know what I mean? Like, so there's, like, those big health things. They're, they're big, major fucking changes in my life that's happened because of this diet, yeah, do you know what I mean? Um, they're major things, and I won't, I, like, I, I, I started this diet to live longer. I had no expectation that any of this shit was going to happen, do you know what I mean? There's, like, totally unexpected effects that's happened with it. So, yeah, so, like, that's, that's, like, the major things. And, like, most of the other changes, they're much more, they're much more subtle, I suppose, really. Like, quite hard to, to quantify. Like, I, I'm much more active. And it's not just because I'm, because I, because I'm capable of, of, um, do you know what? I have to get involved in everything. Right. It's not just because, like, my ME is letting me do things, whatever, right? Like, even when I have good days, I'm not running around the house, do you know what I mean? I still sit down and not, don't do anything for a lot of time. But, like, whatever, I've just found myself being much more active. Like, I go for walks, yeah, but I've been going for, like, shit loads of walks. Like, loads of walks. Like, two or three times a day sometimes. And the thing is that, like, I do, I do these walks and I walk for miles, yeah. And, like, I don't get tired. Like, do you know what I mean? Before, if I went for a walk, like halfway through, I'd start to get a bit tired. On the way home, I might be a bit knackered, out of breath and stuff. Like now, I go for a walk, I come home, I feel like I haven't done anything. I could just carry on. I could go do, do another walk or do whatever, yeah. And I don't like having any negative effects. So before, 
If I'd have gone and done this amount of exercise, like in two or three days time, I'd have had a really bad day, do you know what I mean? Like, that's how it worked. It had like a delayed effect, but like any physical activity would have had a mass massively negative effect on me with my ME and stuff. And I don't seem to be getting any of that, right? Like, it doesn't matter what I do, it, like, it, it doesn't seem to be affecting it, which is weird. It's like, it's totally changed nature of how it works and stuff. And I just feel like I've got loads of energy. Like, my body just, like, do you know what I mean? I'm like 48, like my body's like, whatever, it started to complain. And do you know what I mean? I get my aches and my pains and you're, you're getting old, you're gonna die soon. <laughs> but I don't need that, no aches, no pains, nothing. My body feels like it's a fucking 20 year old or something. I just feel pumped. I feel like, just like 10 men. I feel like I could fight all night or something. Fuck all night, whatever, right? But I just feel like I've got loads of energy. And like, it's not like I have to do things. It's not like, oh, I've got this energy, I need to expend it or whatever. It's just it's just kind of there. And like when I need to use it, I can use it. Uh, yeah, I mentioned this one in the other one about the same thing to do with walking. It's like, that I noticed that there's like, like a delayed reaction before the ketones kick in. So like, whatever I say, right, I'm going to go for a walk. So I've been sat down doing nothing. I go, all right, I'm going for a walk. I stand up, I start walking, yeah. I start walking and then all of, then my muscles just start to complain like fuck like you know like I used to do a lot of weight training and stuff and it feels like when you're doing weight training and you like you push your muscle until it's exhaustion until it fails do you know what I mean and then afterwards you try to use that muscle and it just feels weak like it's got nothing in there yeah it feels like that it feels really weak it kind of hurts in a little bit do you know what I mean like it's not right really nice. And it's just knackered, right? And then if you just keep pushing and keep walking, eventually it goes away and everything's fine. And I think what's going on is like, so I've started doing exercise, so my body's looking for carbohydrates, sugars, and there isn't any. So then it has to go into ketones. But I think there's a delay. I think ketones just take a longer time to metabolize into energy. So you have to wait for it to kick in. And then when it kicks in, everything's fine. So I've noticed that, and that's 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 always that's a constant. That's what it's always like. Every time I go for a walk, I feel like that, and then it just like goes away, and I feel like I could run a marathon. Or something. And so there's that, like that's 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 a change in like the, like the physicality of my body, I suppose. Do you know what I mean? I haven't really done anything physical for ages. and now I feel like I can do a lot more physical things than what I ever did before, and like. I don't know, I feel like I can push myself without it being negative. I don't have a, it doesn't have a massive negative effect on me if I push myself. Which is totally new. Um, but yeah, it didn't cure it, but but my, my life's a million times better because of it. Um, like, I don't know, like, one of the other things, I haven't mentioned this in any of my videos, I just keep forgetting to mention it for some reason, I don't really know what. And that's like my my oral health shall we say yeah so like i've got fucking loads of problems with my teeth but like the thing is we talk about the nhs and how fantastic it is and it is a fantastic service but the thing is that dentists is not really covered by it and like most dentists won't even take on nhs patients so if you can't afford to pay for it you, you're fucked generally you don't there's nobody will treat you so i haven't been able to get any treatment for my teeth for ages and like just before I was doing this start of this diet, right? So these like two back teeth here, both of them. Like years ago, with a whatever X ray or something, they noticed that there was like a bit of decay in it, and it's got worse over years. Yeah. And will you stop jumping up here? I know you want to be with me, but you're just getting in front of the camera, right? Um. So. Yeah, so these two teeth, and it just got worse and worse and worse. It was getting to the point like, where there's massive flare-ups going on in my mouth, where all my gums were all swollen, like I had gum disease or something. And my tooth looked, felt like it was going to fall out. It was awful, it was painful and whatever. And that would flare up, and then later on another one would flare up. It would be horrible, yeah? Now, at the time I started the carnivore diet, these two were right. It, it was horrible, yeah? They were both loose, and they were... They were both really tender. I couldn't bite down on them. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't put any pressure on it at all. When I was eating, I was having to eat around it and go to other teeth and stuff. Just totally ignore it. And like you could taste the decay. Do you know what I mean? Like you swish water on, you could like, oh, whatever. It tasted rank. So I knew my teeth were rotting. There wasn't much I could do about it. Yeah, right. So this didn't, this wasn't anything like that happened pretty quickly. This was like about week three or week four, maybe. But I noticed this one. 
it calmed down, it wasn't wobbling about as much, it didn't hurt as much, and like, whatever. And this one was a little bit better. This one was a lot, quite a, fa a fair bit better, and this one was this one was just a little bit better. And over time, it just they both just got better and better. And now this two here, right, if I push it with my tongue, it's like slightly tender, shall we say. But I can bite down on this now, on food, which I couldn't do before. This tooth is now, right, we're in week eight, and this is, it's just, just happened, like, in the last couple of days, this one, is now, when I press it, it's just slightly tender, and I can now bite down on that, so I can, I can, I can basically use my mouth, you know what I mean? I don't have to swish food around to avo avoid things that hurt. I can just eat food, and that's it. It's awesome. Right, so I think really what's going on here, right, is, like, so those teeth are decaying. That's what was going on. I could taste the decay. It's quite clear. Yeah. Right, but what happens is, why your teeth decay is like there's bacteria and shit that live in your mouth and like they live on sugars and when they, they when they break down the sugar they produce an acid and it's the acid that starts to rot your teeth yeah so that's why you get tooth decay yeah well the thing is though like, i'm not eating any sugars right i don't i don't eat any of that shit right so there's nothing in my mouth for the bacteria to live on and so they all die yeah so then there's no bacteria there to start rotting my teeth yeah i don't know how that's helped it kind of repair itself or whatever do you know what i mean or make it less painful why was it less painful just because it's not rotting i don't really understand that but well whatever i don't give a fuck I'm, i've got my mouth back and i can eat like a normal person <laughs> so that's another awesome thing that's happened to do with this diet um like i've said before do you know, like, the thing is that, like, all of the things that I've said, they're all the same. Nothing has got any worse or anything, do you know what I mean? All the effects that's, that's happened over time, they're all still there, do you know what I mean? Um, which makes it pretty clear that it's the diet that's, that's, that's like, the cause of it, however. Um, so things like the way that, like, I, I think about food and the way I look at food and when I look at a few plants, I just think poison factories covered with poison i'm not putting that in my body and stuff like that and i still do think like that as i walk down i just go sugar 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 <laughs> that's all i do when i'm walking down an aisle of a shop and i just i don't even look at it really i just kind of notice that it's there but i'm not really i don't get enticed by it at all do you know what I mean? and like when i go in shops before i'd walk into a shop and if there's sweets and stuff i'd buy every time if every time i went into a shop to buy like whatever some bread or something i'd always come out with some sweets also crisps or some some chocolate or some shit always i'd always get sucked into buying this shit even though that's not what i went in for but now i just like it's not even the slightest bit appealing to me at all so like other thing is like shoplifting yeah so like i used to shop with sweets and stuff and like really anything for me to shop with i'm gonna shop with some sausages or something <laughs> anyway right, so i was at the i was at the the counter yeah and it's really easy to steal from counter because it's right under their eyes and they don't know how to do it but whatever yeah and i looked down there was this bar and it said like protein bar I was like oh what, whatever that might what i don't know what that is so so i shoplifted it and i came outside and it had like zero carbohydrates it's like some kind of chocolate stuff so i was like yeah whatever i didn't really Whatever, let's have a try of it. So I tasted it. It was like it was awful. It was like eating coconut powder. It was first felt really powdery, and it just, it just rank. So whatever. Cause I keep I keep going like do you know, like so like I've I've massively modified this diet, but like one of the main differences is that I've started to introduce some carbohydrates. So I've set myself a maximum of 35 grams of carbs per day, but I am eating some, yeah. So it like opens up all kinds of possibilities. So I've actually like started looking on foods at the nutritional thing to see if they've got any carbs in it, yeah. So I was making massive assumptions like, like I threw a jar of beetroot and sweet pickle um, and uh, I can't remember what the other thing was whatever right and yeah right i threw them away because i was like whatever they're gonna have to go loads of carbohydrates i didn't really look to see whether they did or not but now i looked again beetroot practically no carbohydrates so that's good i like i like a bit of beetroot so i got some of that sweet pickle yeah it's got quite a lot but like per 100 grams 
And like, you don't put 100 grams worth of fucking pickle on a sandwich, do you? <laughs> it's not everything like that, so... So I can add that in. And I keep finding little things that I can have, yeah. But then I keep looking at things like, oh, let's have a look at a chocolate bar. <laughs> you know, whatever, you know, I can't... For, for, it's like 80, 80 grams or something. You know, whatever. Keep trying, looking at things. What about a packet of crisps? Yeah, no, that's not going to work. <laughs> can't have any crisps, mate. Forget about crisps. Forget about crisps, forget about chocolate, don't look at sweets, you're not going to be able to eat any of them, right, whatever. So, whatever, yeah, I'm not even asked about any of this stuff, do you know what I mean? It's just, you just think, yeah, well, like, if we're cheating, if we're having some carbs, like, see what we can have. And I found loads of things like potatoes and stuff, low, low carb potatoes, 17 grams per hundred, whatever, it's nothing. And I'm finding loads and loads of different things that I can have, and it's just making food more interesting to be honest yeah, do you know what I mean? um but i'm i'm really i'm still enjoying it i'm fucking I, I love i love my food and it's also like f f feeding myself is just it's just easy now i don't really have to think about anything i get up in the morning yeah and i'm fasting for like eight hours and like i've settled down to having roughly two meals a day yeah and i'm i'm hardly snacking either yeah this is like when i first started off i was eating loads like when i first started on this diet i was eating about four or five meals a day <laughs> it was ridiculous and then i settled down and then i started only having one meal a day and i was fine on just one meal that was crazy but i seem to have settled down now a majority of the time like from now i have two meals that i have per day and I haven't really been snacking very much either in between. I've got loads of nice snacks. I like, I fry up a load of streaky bacon and some little chipolati sausages and I just like snack on them and stuff. And I've got loads of other things like fridge raiders. They're really fucking low in carbs. And like pepperoni sausages and cheese. I've got loads of different kinds of cheese and, and like salami and, and, and stuff like that. I've got loads and loads of snacky shit, do you know what I mean? I've even got like peanuts as well. Like, peanuts has got some carbohydrates in, but, like, a, a handful is practically nothing, do you know what I mean? Like, this is the thing, is like, all the nutritional stuff tells you per 100 grams, do you know what I mean? So, at first I was looking at it, I'd go, like, oh, 28, and you're like, oh, whatever, that's loads, that's far too many. But then I'm like, then I've realised, look, it's it's per 100 grams. You very you rarely use 100 grams of anything when you're putting it on, do you know what I mean? Like, that's it's quite a fair quantity is 100 grams. And you look at the jar, and the jar's like 300, and you're like, that's basically a third of that jar, and you're not going to be putting anything like that amount on it, so... And I think I'm like, kind of... I'm I figuring it out a bit more, do you know what I mean? Like, all the numbers and stuff. It's like, do you know, like, when I was a vegan, I had to do this, constantly looking at ingredients, things, and figuring out what was in the food I was going to eat and shit. Yeah. And then, like, whatever, when I was just, whatever eating whatever I was eating for, right? I didn't have to do any of that. I don't really give a shit what was in it. <laughs> and now I'm finding that I'm having to do that again to find out how many carbohydrates are in everything. Do you know what I mean? And the other thing is as well, right, yeah, so I'm not sure because like, is it carbohydrate? Because like when you look on it, it says carbohydrates and then it says of which are sugars. Yeah, and there's a different number for them, usually. Right. Like, I'm not sure. Is it the sugars that are the? F I don't know. I'm just. I'm just sticking to carbs and I fuck it. I don't want to go. I don't want to get out of ketosis. So. so. So yeah, I've been in ketosis now for two months. It's horrible. I've hardly eaten any carbs, even if I've got thirty-five grams. I don't get anywhere near that amount. I don't eat that many of them, but there's just some things like bread and stuff that are just really nice. P chips, right? Potatoes, yeah, like. That, it's just been a massive game changer. I fucking love it. So I can have chips with everything. Like, have a steak. Instead of just a steak, I can have steak and chips. Just a fucking potato and chips, man. Well, nice. I've been having chips with just about everything. <laughs> I'm going to make some mashed potatoes to go with my face. And, yeah, like, basically, like... So, again, before doing carnival, yeah, so I've, like, had my blood test. And, like, every time I have my blood test, I'm... Like, they always find that I'm vitamin D deficient, yeah. First time I had this blood test, the doctor said, I've never seen anybody with such a low vitamin D thing. Put me on this intensive three months course of these massive tablets I just take like four times a day or something. <laughs> Whatever, right? And, and like ever since then, 
Right, the vitamin D deficiency that I had, right, was causing my depression. As soon as I sorted my vitamin D out, that was, it cleared my depression that I've been suffering with all my life. It was a vitamin D deficiency that was causing it. I hadn't had, dep had, had depression for five years now. All down to vitamin D. Stay there. I will pet you here. Don't jump up. Um, so, um, so, yeah, I've always had a vitamin D deficiency. And, like, every morning I, like, take my meds and stuff. And, like, as part of taking my meds, I take a vitamin tablet. And I take, um, a, like, a vitamin D, like, capsule thing. I can see what you're thinking of doing. I'm not stupid, I know you. Yeah. All right, so I take, these, I take these supplements, right? So I take a vitamin tablet and I take this vitamin D. And then I take my meds and stuff. And I take a fibre tablet thing. Dietary fibre tablet, two tablets. Um, but anyhow, yeah, so I've been doing that for, like forever to keep my vitamin D up, yeah. And like at the moment, my, my last blood test, it was like, yeah, you've got, you're quite low in vitamin D, but it's not anything big, yeah, whatever. Which is crazy because I've been taking all these supplements. Like the vitamin tablet's got vitamin D in it and I'm taking like a massively heavy dose of vitamin D and yet I'm still fucking vitamin D deficiency. Whatever. But anyhow, right, I was thinking about it, right. But the thing is, like, I don't, I don't, I don't think I need to take them anymore, right? My, this diet covers everything, right? I don't need vitamins. I've, all, I, I've got enough of vitamins. A fucking slab of steak's got more vitamins in it. A fucking egg. I have an egg every day. Uh, I mix an egg into a thingy of kefir and milk every day. So I'm getting all the vitamins I need. I don't think I need to take these supplements anymore, so... Save me some fucking money on buying them shit. But I just don't think I do, yeah. Do you know what I mean, like... Like we know what the we know what the deficiencies are in this diet, yeah. So, like I used to take the vitamin tablet because of iron. I, I've I've like suffered from anemia before, right? So I think I don't think I like before in my other diet. I don't think I got enough iron in my diet, yeah. So I was, I was anemic sometimes. So I used to take this vitamin tablet because it had vitamin D in it and it had iron and it had loads of other things in it as well. But that those were the two things that I was taking it for. Do you know what I mean? And then the extra vitamin D. I just don't think I need to do it anymore, right? So, so this diet has got deficiencies. So, you're like, well, like a new a nutritionist would say that you're deficient in vitamin C, yeah. But the thing is that vitamin C and and glucose share the same pathways, so they compete for one another. So, the more glucose you've got in your blood, the more vitamin C you need to battle it out, yeah. But I ain't got any glucose in my body, so that's zero. So I, I, I practically don't need vitamin C. Do you know what I mean? Vitamin C is to deal with that. I don't need it, yeah. But, right, you can get vitamin C by eating awful and stuff, yeah. But also, like, berries are, like, really low in carbs. So you can have berries, like strawberries and blackberries and, and stuff like that. You can have them because they haven't really got any carbs in them and stuff, yeah. So, like, I get this drink, this pomegranate and cranberry juice made from berries. It's got hardly any carbs in it or whatever. But it's full of vitamin C. It's got loads of vitamin C in it. And I have a glass of that every day, so... Like... Whatever, I've got more vitamin C than what I need. I don't think I need any vitamin C now. Right, the only other major, like, deficiency is, like, vitamin K1. And, like, vitamin K1 is only... You can only get it from plants. It's one of, like, the only vitamins that is only available from plants. But the thing is that, like, you can get vitamin K2, which is a variation of this vitamin. You get vitamin K2 from meat, and the body can convert vitamin K2 into vitamin K1. So it doesn't really matter that you're deficient in that. Do you know what I mean? Because your body will sort it out from other shit, yeah? And the other deficiency is fibre, yeah? Now, it's like... I don't know, right, this... The issue of fibre is massively divisive within, like, whatever, do you know, like, nutritionists and people who are following this diet get into massive arguments about fibre, whether you need fibre or not and stuff, yeah. And, like... But the thing is that, like, um, with the bacteria and stuff that grow in your, grow in your gut, like, it's called your biome, yeah, right? So, so your biome, like, has massive effects on your body, like, in certain hormone releases, and it basically... 
like like digestion in our body when we eat some food and it digests right it's not actually us that's digesting this food it's all the bacteria that lives in our gut that's what breaks down our food into smaller bits and stuff digestion is is not done by humans it's done by bacteria yeah and but they have loads of effects in it like like they've cured people of depression and stuff just by changing their, their thing right? it's like a it's like an emerging area of study within like medicine science and stuff but the thing is that like, we do know a lot about this bacteria and we know that there are good bacteria and there are bad bacteria like bad bacteria cause like diseases and stuff like unitary shark infections and, and shit like that yeah and good bacteria co create like hormones for us and they create vitamins for us these bacteria create vitamins in our gut and stuff from it and they help to break down food and they help keep our immune system strong and whatever right these good bacteria do a, a lot of stuff yeah and like what we know is like the bad bacteria like they live on sugars yeah that's what keeps them alive and the good bacteria live on fiber so this thing about not getting enough fiber yeah, it's got nothing to do with like nutrition it's just you need it to keep the good bacteria alive if you don't have any fiber then all the good bacteria will die as well and then you won't have any bacteria living in your gut. And then that's when bad bacteria come in and start taking over and shit. You need to have good bacteria to keep the bad bacteria away because they start competing for things, yeah? So so that's why I take a dietary supplement for that, yeah. But that's but that they are the only um, deficiencies that you can get. And like I said, they're not a problem. They're not a problem. I, an egg a day and eating steak and stuff i'm getting everything i need my body doesn't need anything else so i don't really need these supplements so i'm gonna stop taking them i'll just take my meds and some fiber for, get fucking rid of vitamins things um and like thing is as well like vitamin like so vitamins come in two forms there's like water soluble and fat soluble yeah and like most vitamins are like water soluble which means they they pass through your body really quickly right so you can't overdose on them or anything yeah but then there are fat soluble um there are fat soluble vitamins like vitamin k and vitamin d is fat soluble which means they get absorbed into the fat yeah which means they don't pass through the body which means they build up which means you can get a toxic level level of vitamin d do you know what i mean so i'm thinking if I'm getting all the vitamin D I need from my food, taking a massive supplement of them, or two supplements of it, of it like that, that might not be such a good idea to do. Do you know what I mean? Like, low level vitamin D is really bad for your health, but also high levels of vitamin D is also bad for your health. So I'm gonna knock them on 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 on, on edge anyhow. Um, certain things like so. Another thing, right, which is like linked to like my ME, yeah, is that. <clears throat> One of the symptoms of ME is what we call brain fog, yeah, which is quite difficult to explain to people what it's like, but, like, I'll try. <laughs> so, essentially, it's like, um, it's like, essentially, your brain just stops working, right? Like, so what it feels like is, like, so, you know, We've got all these different sensors all over our body, our eyes, our ears, our nose, our mouth and stuff, yeah? And like, we get information from the world by what we can see and what we can hear and what we can smell and what we can taste and all that sort of shit, yeah? And what it feels like is like, what I call it sensory overload, right? It just feels like there's too much information coming into my brain and my brain just cannot handle it, yeah? So what it starts to do is it starts to shut things down, yeah? So like, my, my vision starts to go and I can't see properly, yeah? And like, whatever, it's just my brain's trying to, it feels like it's trying to protect itself. And like, there's different severity of this happening. So like, when it starts to happen to me, yeah, I would just like close my eyes and I'd just drift off into another world and like go into my mind, imagination and stuff. Because I can't deal with the reality that's in front of me, right? Because what happens is like when, like when people talk to you, right? So somebody will say something to me, yeah? And like that goes into my brain and then there's like a delay where my brain kind of tries to figure out what the fuck just happened yeah and it's like like someone just said something to you and you're like what did you say do you know what i mean and like it takes a bit of time for my brain to figure out what you just said to me and then i have to figure out what my response is going to be yeah and it, 
and it can be like microseconds, right? But but when you're having a conversation with somebody, it becomes noticeable that you're, there's a delay before you're responding to them. Do you know what I mean? And it can like it can be it can break up conversation and stuff. But it's like whatever. I like sometimes like a lot of times when when I'm in that state, like it helps me if I just have a single sensory thing to to focus on. So I, I generally put the radio on and listen to Radio 4 or World Service or something. So all I can do is just focus on that audio and that's it. And I don't have to deal with anything that's coming into my eyes or anything that my skin's telling me or anything, any of this sensory stuff that's going on. I can shut all that out and I can just focus on one sensory thing, which is like audio. Yeah, that's generally what I do. Or I just go off into my own imagination or whatever. But the thing is like, Somebody who, like, I don't know, I don't want to sound arrogant, but, like, somebody who, whatever, like, my intelligence, yeah, my intellect and stuff is, like, an important part of who, who, I, who I am, who I think, when I think of myself, do you know what I mean? Like, my ability to outthink people or... To come up with clever solutions to problems and stuff like that, or whatever. Like these things are like really important to me. Who I am, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, <laughs> like other people have called me an intellectual. <laughs> I don't know what I think about that, but you know what I mean. I've got like my social group, my friends and stuff. They've all got PhDs and masters and shit like that. Do you know what I mean? And I argue with them, all right. So, but whatever, right? The thing is that, like, my brain's important to me, and like, it's part of who I think of myself. So, like, my brain not working, it's like the worst possible thing. Do you know what I mean? It's like awful. It feels just like I'm feel like I'm being completely robbed of my personality and who I am. And it's, it was one of my one of the hardest symptoms for me to deal with was brain fog. I couldn't deal with it. I hated it. But anyhow, the thing is, like, last two months, I had any brain fog at all, not one little bit. Not a little bit at all. My brain is just clear. It's just, I just feel alert. I feel capable of any mental gymnastics or whatever, arguing or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, even like making these videos and stuff, my brain's just really clear and I'm just like very aware of whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, and I had any brain fog. It's just been amazing, man. It's been, it's been awesome. I hated that. I hated that's gone, it's cleared up. It seems to like, do you know with the epilepsy and then this brain fog, it seems to be like something going on in the brain here with, with on this diet that's changing things. Like, do you know what I mean? Like epilepsy, is, it's in the brain, isn't it, right? And this brain fog's clearly in the brain and these things are just fucking cleared up like they've just gone away. Like, whatever, I don't know, what's, I don't know what the, the cause of these things are because like whatever the cause is, something's gone on to change that or to interrupt it or, or whatever, yeah. But the thing is, like, studies that they've done on the brain when it's using ketones as its energy source instead of using carbohydrates, when you switch over into ketosis and your body starts using fats and stuff rather than sugars. And they've done loads of studies on the brain, you know, and it showed that, like, the neurons are much better connected to it. Um, and, like... Like brain capacity, in like the, the the amount of electricity that's passing through the brain, like goes up massively when you're using ketones rather than rather than carbs. They also did another experiment with like a human heart. They took it out of the body, put it up to some electrodes and stuff, kept it alive. They got another one, and they fed one of them carbohydrates, and they fed the other one ketones. And the one they gave ketones lasted twice as long. That one wore out, and whatever would have had a heart attack or whatever after a certain amount of time. But this one lasted twice as long, and all the muscles and everything were much stronger, and, like, it seemed to, like, make the heart work better. It just seems that, like, in this ketosis state, everything just works better, do you know what I mean? Everything just seems to work. Like, like, thing, like, so, for instance, like, my, 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 um, oh, my God, um, like when I need to go to the toilet for a shit, yeah, right, whatever. I didn't really have a schedule before, I was, whatever, like, I'd just go whenever I needed to go, but it wasn't, like, at any particular time, do you know what I mean? It was just whenever it happened uh, to do it. But now, as soon as I wake up, within a few minutes I have to go for a shit, every single morning, 
like every single morning, like clockwork, this happens. That never happened before. I'll tell you something else that's happened, yeah? This has only happened recently, right? So, like, another one of the, like, shitty fucking symptoms of my ME, yeah, is my ridiculous sleep patterns, yeah. So, so, like, the thing is, like, with my sleep patterns, there's no normal. I can't tell you what it's normally like for me, right? Because it's just so fucking erratic and illogical. It doesn't make any sense why this happens. But, like, so, right, if I start... So, let's say, so let's say we start on, on what we might call normal, yeah? Where I, go, where I get up at 7 o'clock in the morning and I go to bed at, like, whatever, 1 o'clock or midday, midnight or something, yeah? Right, so if I started off on that sleep pattern, what would happen is the next day... I'd I'd stay up later and then I'd get up later and then I'd stay up later and I'd get up later and eventually my sleep pattern would just get completely out of sync with everybody else's. So instead of getting up at seven o'clock in the morning, I'm now getting up at seven o'clock at night. Do you know what I mean? Right? And that's what happens with it, yeah? So that would be like a thread of what's happening. But then what happens is in between that, I get insomnia, right? Where I can't sleep for like three days. And like teetering on the edge of fucking insanity with sleep deprivation. So I get insomnia and I can't sleep, yeah. And then I also get what's called hypersomnia, which means I sleep for ridiculous amounts of time. So I go to bed and I'll sleep for like 18 hours or something, yeah. And then what happens is I wake up and I'm awake for like three or four hours and then I have to go back to bed again and I sleep for another 12 hours or something like that. And that's hypersomnia. So that means my sleep man is just a fucking mess it's an absolute mess and i've got no idea this is one of the things where i can't plan to do anything is because I, I might i might be just getting up or i might be just going to bed at that time whatever I, i've got no idea what's going to happen with it and like for the longest time i tried to control this sleep and force it into what might be called normal yeah i did i had sleeping tablets i used to force myself to get up at a certain time and stuff and all it did is make my ME worse when I started doing that, right? So in the end, I just thought, right, whatever, whatever, I'm just going to have to just live with it, whatever it is. Whatever whatever my sleep pattern is, I'm just going to have to live with that, yeah. And, like, the internet's saving grace, do you know what I mean? Well, Twitter and stuff. Like, because it doesn't matter what time I'm up, there's always somebody else who's up on Twitter who can talk to at 3 o'clock in the morning or whatever, do you know what I mean? Like, 25 years ago, it was a bit more isolating being up at crazy o'clock, but, like... Yeah, it, I've learned to live with it, do you know what I mean? I've just basically learned to live with it. That's, 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 that's all it is, yeah. Anyhow, right, for last... What day, what day, right? So, whatever, longer than two weeks, yeah? I'm not sure exactly what, how many days it is now, but like, it's more than two weeks away, yeah? I've got up. Well, right, I started getting up at 7 o'clock in the morning, yeah, like yesterday I got up at 11 o'clock. But I've been getting up before midday every single day for the last two weeks. And I've been going to bed, whatever, 12 o'clock or something. It's like 20 past 1 now, I'm thinking about going to bed soon. Um, but for the last over two weeks, I've been living a normal sleep pattern. That's never happened. I mean, that's never happened to me in my... In, in, in all this time that I've had ME, that's never happened to me. That I, like, I've had, you know what I mean? I might have three or four days where I'm, I'm sleeping normal, but then, then I'll end up with insomnia or hypersomnia or whatever. Something will go fuck up and I'll, I'll end up with some other... And then next day I'll be put some crazy time. Do you know what I mean? That's what happens. But for what, over two weeks now, like a, a fairly normal, you know, getting up before midday and stuff every day and sometimes it's earlier and sometimes it's not and then what was also weird is i had a little bit of an insomnia it wasn't like a three day thing i just couldn't get to sleep and like i stayed up till about six o'clock in the morning or something yeah and then <clears throat> and then i woke up at 11 and i was like whatever i've hardly had any sleep but i didn't feel tired yeah and i got up at 11 and then i went back to sleep and then that, then that night i went to sleep at midnight and it just flipped carried on being normal <laughs> and I was like, whatever, this has never happened to me before. So I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying being up when everybody else is up and getting up when sun shines there and seeing the sun and stuff instead of just living in darkness. <laughs>
<laughs> like some kind of fucking vampire or something. Yeah, so... <laughs> so, yeah, um, other things. I don't know what other things really now. When I think about it, I can't think of anything else that's really changed. I suppose, I suppose my state of mind, really, yeah. So, like I said, it's like, um, I used to suffer massively from depression. I used to suffer from what used to be called manic depression. You get these in, in, intense highs and then these fucking intense lows and stuff. I think it's called bipolar disease. All that today. I don't know, but I had it pretty bad for decades. Uh, decades I suffered with it. And the thing was, like, I noticed that there was a pattern to my depression. It got worse in spring, and I had a bad patch in autumn. And then I realised it was linked to changes of the clock. Do you know when we change the change the clock? It was always up just after that when I had these depression. And it's to do with vitamin D, do you know what I mean? That well, The reason why it was so bad in the spring was because you'd just gone like nearly an entire year with no vitamin D all through the winter and stuff like that. And you didn't have any vitamin D to start off with, so you've run out of it pretty quickly, do you know what I mean? And that's why it was shit for me. But anyway, right, so we sorted that vitamin D out and I didn't have any depression. But the thing is that like, like, do you know what I mean? Because I suffered from it for a long time. I was like very, I'm very aware of my mental health. Do you know what I mean? And I kind of check myself. Do you know what I mean? Like, if I start, if I start, when something happens, if my first reaction is something negative, yeah, then I'll check myself going like, what, why are you being negative and stuff? Do you know what I mean? Because like, that's just the first start is the negative thoughts. Do you know what I mean? And so I'm quite well aware of my own mental health and, and I'm, I, I kind of monitor it, do you know what I mean? Because, like, whatever it's gone away, it's st it could still come back, do you know what I mean? I'm, I've suffered from this for decades. I might not have had it for, like, five years, but I'm still not ready to stop looking for it, do you know what I mean? I still don't want it to happen anymore. It's fucking one of the worst things in your life, depression. It's fucking horrible, man. I don't want, I don't want to suffer from that again. But anyway, so I kind of monitor my mental health and stuff, yeah. And like anybody, my mental health goes up and down. I have good bits, I have good, have bad bits, and whatever you like. But, but, but to be fair, right, I don't have these highs and lows like I had before. I'm f fairly middling most of the time. Fairly middling. Um, like I take this drug, amitriptyline, yeah, which is like I take it for pain. Yeah. I've got like three different kinds of pain, and I take three different kinds of painkillers for it. And this amitriptyline's for like. Um, it's like a back background pain that's like there all the time. It's like an ache that's like my whole body like aches and stuff. Um, it's for that. But at a higher dose, I only take it at a really low dose, yeah. <clears throat> but at, at a higher low, higher dose, they do it for antidepression, yeah. It's an antidepressant. And I'm only taking it at a really low level. But whatever, it's still an antidepressant. And even if I'm taking it at a low level, it's having a low level antidepressant effect on me. Do you know what I mean? And I think it just kind of keeps me on that even, straight, straight. I have ups and downs, but I don't have this fucking massive thing that I was living with before. So, yeah, so like, yeah. So my mental health goes up and down like anybody else's and stuff, do you know what I mean? But one of the things I've noticed is that, do you know, because there's been changes, I've been like, how, how do I feel? Do you know what I mean? Like, you get in touch with my feelings or whatever. Like, I've been thinking, how do, how do I feel in myself? Do you know, like, and I feel stronger and I feel like I've got loads of energy and stuff. I feel like I could take on, I could fight or whatever. I feel much, much, I feel healthy and fit, really, even though I'm clearly not. I haven't done any exercise for 25 years. I'm clearly not healthy or fit. But I feel like I am, do you know what I mean? And I, um, the thing is that, uh, um, I'm, I'm like asking myself, how do I feel right now? And like, one of the things that I've, I realised the other day is that I feel happy. <laughs> I feel genuinely happy. I find, I feel, I find myself smiling a lot more. I've got a really positive outlook. I've always had a positive outlook on life, really, to be honest. Like, depression was like a deviation from me, like, complete opposite of what was, like, normal, eh? Like, <clears throat> but I just feel, re I feel genuinely happy. And the thing is that, like, you know, so there's been all these changes with me going out, making a best friend, whatever, doing things like that. But 
but like I didn't really start doing that until like well whatever maybe third week or something yeah because because these changes were only starting to happen and I was just getting used to things you know what I mean and I was like yeah I can go for a walk but like I should have maybe I shouldn't maybe whatever things will go wrong whatever do you know what I mean like I wasn't quite I wasn't quite used to not being like I was do you know what I mean like it was a massive change to my life and it took me a little bit of time to get yeah right let's go out let's do things let's 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 fucking take advantage of this shit do you know what I mean it took me a bit of time to do that but I, I felt this happiness before that, right? So before all the good things that have been happening, because there's been quite a lot of cool, cool shit happening in my life recently, which has been pretty good. I just need to get back onto it. <laughs> right. Whatever. <clears throat> so, yeah, um, so there's been a lot, quite a few good things that have been going on in my life. I've been sharing it with you on my videos, I know. Yeah, and like... Um, so, but but even before those good things, I felt happy. I felt good. I felt content. I felt good in myself. Do you know what I mean? So my men mental my state of mind has just been just ridiculously good, ridiculously positive. I feel good. I feel happy. I feel. Can't remember the last time I felt happy. Do you know what I mean? I felt yeah, all right, but <laughs> felt happy for a long time. But I feel happy. I feel happy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Other little thing, right, I've mentioned this before, but, like, I'm not half as lazy as I used to be, right? I admit it, I'm lazy, yeah. If I have to do something and I can figure out some way of not doing that, then that's probably what I'll do. Yeah, that's just who I am. I'm like that. I've always been lazy. I only do things when I have to. I only do washing up when fucking, when it's overflowing with stuff and I can't fit anything else in it. Do you know what I mean, right? That's, I'm sorry, but that's what it's like. I clean up when the house is filthy. Yeah, <coughs> not ever, you know what I mean? I am, that's just who I am, whatever, that's, that's my personality, it's what I'm like and stuff. What the fuck is that? I don't know what that is. Whatever, sorry. Some gooey shit coming out of one of these boxes. Anyhow, right, just let me wash my hands, sorry, because this is awful. So, yeah, um, the thing is that, like, um, Tell me what I was talking about. Um, yeah, um, <clears throat> I don't know. I can't remember what I was saying, and I, I don't really know about what else I've got to say about it. <laughs> um, it's been it's been quite a surprise for me. Like all these different changes and stuff, it's had such, such a ridiculously dramatic effect on my life that I'd never in a million years guessed it was going to do this for me. Um, it's changed, it's changed lots of things for me. It's changed like um, it's changed the way I think about a lot of things. To be honest, that I hadn't really thought about before. Like, I'm, I'm enjoying it, and like. I'm proper enjoying my food. I really like. Again, I don't know why this is the case, but this started when I started on this carnivore diet. Instead of like putting some food in my mouth, chewing it a little bit, and then swallowing it, I tend now to put some food in my mouth and just keep chewing it and chewing it and chewing it and chewing it and chewing it until there's practically nothing left of it. And you just keep getting these floods of flavours over and over. And, like, I just savour my food so much more, man. So much more. It's just... Yeah. Yeah, right, whatever. I'll just leave it there because I can't think of anything else to say, to be honest. There's a few other things that I wanted to talk about. My mind's gone blank. Whatever. Yeah, right. So, two months in. Dramatic changes to my health. Loads of, loads of other little more subtle changes to my state of mind my way of thinking and stuff like the way that my body works the way that it feels just my my thinking and everything just seems to be improved i just seem to be much better than than i was before i feel like a 20 year old man i really do i feel like i could do anything um so, yeah, whatever, I'll leave it there. So, yeah, come carnival, you know it makes sense.